Let's talk about working smarter and not harder when it comes to sunset or sunrise photography. Now, I don't know any photographer who's like, I hate photographing sunsets or sunrises. Um, actually, I'm not a fan of sunrise photography because I can't stand waking up early. I love sleeping in. But the thing with sunset and sunrise photography is that um, it, it's arguably one of the most challenging times to photograph because as the sun gets lower in the horizon, uh, you've got this really, really bright thing in your sky uh, and you want to make sure that you properly expose for that sky and the foreground. And even with the best camera sensors, sometimes there's trouble capturing all of that dynamic range in one single shot. And I've talked about this for years, the importance of HDR and tone mapping. And that's one of the main reasons why I wanted to make this video is to kind of set a reminder, especially for photographers who are uh, newer, you know, more kind of uh, beginner photographers who are trying to get uh, more of an understanding of how to improve their sunset photography. I also will link in the description to a very long comprehensive guide that I put together to sunset photography and sunrise photography. So be sure to check that out. Um, and then I'm going to also show you uh, just one of my most favorite things when it comes to uh, editing sunset photos with the newer versions of Lightroom or Photoshop. So let's jump into Lightroom over here. And this is what I wanted to talk about with regards to HDR. So at a super high level, what HDR is, it stands for high dynamic range. And the dynamic range of your scene is basically uh, the tone from the brightest parts of your image to the darkest parts of your image. When you want to tone map, which is uh, the process of creating an HDR image, you want to take images that are uh, bracketed by the exposure or the shutter speed. So in this case here, you can see um, I took this with an old school Sony a7 and a Canon 15 millimeter fisheye lens. Now it's important to note that in between these three exposures, the aperture and the ISO have not changed. So you, you really don't want to change those. You want to keep those the same. And the only thing that you're going to bracket with is shutter speed. And so if we look here more closely, you can see this is the kind of normal or averaged out exposure. Then I took another exposure, same exact scene, did not move the, the camera. The camera was locked on the tripod, except I exposed for the brightest parts of the image. So you can see how the majority of the frame is now dark, but we have all of this good information in the sky. And then the third image exposes for the shadows or the darkest parts of the image. So you lose all of the information um, in the sky. And with tone mapping, what we want to do is we want to take these three images and we want to combine them and select the best or most kind of evenly exposed pixels throughout each of these images and combine them. And that'll give us a much higher dynamic range photo to be able to manipulate tone and color. And that's important when you start editing something like a sunset or a sunrise photo, especially one with, that is as colorful as this one is over here. So how do you do that? Well, in Lightroom, it's super easy. All you need to do is select the brackets that you have here, right click, and then go to photo merge and select HDR. HDR tone mapping has been around for years. And if you've been part of that scene years ago, you might remember that the images looked positively atrocious, not all of them, but a lot of them. I will give Adobe credit there tone mapping uh, algorithm is phenomenal. It provides an HDR image, but it looks very natural. Now, a few things to, to note here. The first is auto align. Um, this I typically keep on. What it does is it'll automatically align your bracketed images. Um, this is especially helpful if you're hand holding, but don't hand hold when you're doing HDR. Make sure you use a tripod. Um, and then auto settings is the equivalent of hitting the auto button, which I'll show you in, in the um, develop module. Um, I usually enable that just because it looks good, but for the purposes right now of, of this video, I'm going to disable it. And then deghosting, um, if there were elements in your, uh, in the, the multiple bracketed frames that were moving, um, those would appear sometimes as ghosted artifacts. And so this allows you to kind of mitigate that. Um, if you have, you know, a little bit of moving objects and you can, you know, select the most appropriate option since nothing was moving here. Um, I don't need that. And then finally, um, creating a stack. So this is when you, we hit merge over here, it'll take the tone mapped image, the fourth file, and it'll stack it with the three source brackets. So let's go ahead and click merge here. This takes like 
no time at all to do. There is our tone mapped image. And the nice thing is, is that it's saved as a DNG file. So we can still do things like get um, a custom white balance uh, and, and those kinds of things. Now let's just go ahead here really quickly. Let's compare uh, these two images um, and see here uh, if there are any differences. And you can see that for the most part, there aren't a lot of uh, differences. There is a bit more detail on the tone mapped image, but the point is not necessarily um, at the unedited stage. It's you tone map to get a lot more flexibility when you want to uh, edit the tone and color of the photo. And so by getting this tone map photo, you will have a lot more flexibility. And so for now, what I want to do is I'm just going to click on that auto button. This is the same thing as that auto apply auto settings that we just looked at in the tone mapping screen here. And I'll also go ahead here and take the white balance dropper. Um, now here's something also about editing a sunset photo. White balance is a lot more, it's a lot trickier to get correct when you have these really warm colors. So for example, this rock in reality is gray. It's pretty gray, um, but watch what happens if I white balance off of it. You see how we lose, we, it kind of does remove that warm color cast, but it just flattens the image out and it doesn't look as good. Same thing here, if we kind of white balance, a lot of times if I'm white balancing um, when I'm photo, editing a landscape photo and it's more of a midday photo, I'll just white balance off the cloud. But watch what happens if I white balance off of a cloud here. It just it goes you know nuclear blue, and that's because it's trying to create a neutral color temperature and tint um, based off of whatever you're sourcing. So you want to be careful when you're trying to get a white balance for sunset. If you click here again, you can see it kind of deadens it. So in this situation here, I don't always go for a custom white balance, but you know, especially when it comes to sunset and sunrise photography, I find it, it can be a bit challenging. So don't worry about that too much. All right. So now I want to stylize it. And this is where, I mean, to me, Lightroom is just amazing. A couple of years ago, Adobe announced the, this new masking technology that's powered by AI. And it allows you to create masks dynamically for the sky and for the foreground. And so you can apply adjustments independently to the sky in the foreground and it adjusts to each photo. So before, you know, if we'd want to apply, say, let's say before I wanted to apply um, a change to the sky, for example, I'd probably have to take a linear gradient and create this, uh, the selection here, you know, make my edits and then take um, a, an adjustment brush and erase this stuff here. Uh, from the foreground and it was it was a pain in the butt. I'm not gonna lie uh, But it's what uh, most of us used for years But now we have the ability to use AI to apply Settings stylization settings specifically to the sky in the foreground and before I show you them I just want to talk really quickly about a new product that I just released and it's called landscape AI and it's a preset pack that contains custom build presets that will adjust specifically the sky of your photo as well as the foreground of your photo or the entire scene. And I'm going to drop a link in the description below so you can learn more about the product, but I'm going to also show you how it works right here and just how much easier it makes editing sunset and sunrise photos. So watch what I'm going to do here. In the presets over here, you can see the, I have these categories. I have the sky only presets, foreground only presets, and this full scene presets. I want to start by editing the sky. So I'm going to go ahead and expand the sky only presets here and I'm going to hover over. Now watch what happens. A mask is dynamically created specifically for the sky of this photo. And so all I need to do is hover over these presets to see if there's one that I like. And I actually like this fire in the sky one. What's even cooler is that I can also adjust the, the strength of that preset, which you couldn't do with older presets by using this amount slider. And so I'm just gonna go right around here and you can see just how much better the sky looks and it looks totally natural. And then the next thing I wanna do is apply a, a preset to the foreground that matches the new look of the sky. And so that's another thing that we can do now with AI presets is we can stack them together. And so just like before, I'm gonna hover over except right now it's creating a dynamic mask for the foreground, not for the sky. Notice how the sky is not being touched. And so I'm gonna go ahead here and this moving water enhancer 
don't worry about the names. It just, it matches the sky perfectly. And just like before, I'm gonna go ahead and bring it to zero and slowly just kind of get it to a point where it just looks really good. And that to me looks fantastic. I'm gonna go ahead here now and you can also refine those presets. So if you go to the mask here, let's say the foreground, I want, I'm sorry, let's say with the sky, I want to um, maybe add a little bit more of a dehaze. So I'm gonna go ahead here and with that uh, sky mask selected, I'm gonna add just a little bit more of a dehaze. I'm also gonna make it a tiny bit brighter and I'm gonna drop the highlights just a bit. And then for the foreground, I'm gonna go ahead and add even more texture because this is a very textured foreground. And I'm also gonna add a little bit more of a clarity boost so that it really pops, you know, gets really, really crispy. And so with that done, watch if I click on reset to bring us back to the original. That's what we started with. That's the tone mapped photo, but without any edits. And then with the presets that we applied, I mean, it just looks so much better. And again, you can totally adjust the, the presence or the strength of these presets. So to recap, the importance of being able to take bracketed photos, which you can then combine using tone mapping for an HDR photo, that's really important because it allows you to uh, get the most possible sensor data uh, when you're adjusting the tone of your photo. And then the second is taking advantage of the amazing power of these AI presets. Again, you can check out my landscape AI presets, links in the description below. And if you wanna learn more about the AI masking tools in Lightroom, click this video here. And if you found this video helpful, I would love it if you hit the thumbs up button. And if you're not subscribed, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified for all new videos. All right, thanks a lot.